Okay, this is in preparation for your quarter three test. And so what we're gonna do is I am going to do the first column. I am going to do the question here. And then I'm gonna ask that you do the second question on your own. So if you don't understand how to do a question, you need to rewind this video, look back at the steps that I follow and explain how I explain each step and follow those steps step by step to do the question on your own. So I will expect all of this column to be completed on your own and all of those answers put in to the computer. Okay, there should be no questions on what I'm expecting of you. Again, you're going to be watching this video, following along. You are going to be writing down as I ask you to write down. You are going to be pushing buttons on Desmos as I'm asking you to do so. Practicing with me on the first one, and then you're doing the second one on your own. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so question number one says, an ice cream shop surveyed 300 customers at random about their favorite cone. The results are listed in the table below. If the restaurant orders 1,000 cones, blank should be sugar cones. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up a proportion. And this is going to be what we survey compared to what we order. Now, we are talking about sugar cones. So we don't need cake cones and we do not need the no cone. When you do the other problem on your own, you should probably do this. Okay, so we're gonna set up a proportion and it's gonna be what we survey over what we've ordered. So it says that I have surveyed 400. Okay, so if I've surveyed 400, then I could put the 400 there. Well, then I'm gonna worry about the fact that how many actually want the sugar cone. And how many of them want the sugar cone? Well, that's gonna be 100. I don't like that one, you can't really see it. Sorry. That's better. Okay. Now, what we order, so this is gonna be the total, if I think about it this way, this is my total and this is my sugar. So when I'm filling this out, we're looking at what I order now, and we're gonna order 1,000, so we're gonna use 1,000. Now, is 1,000 the total number of cones or the sugar cones? Well, that's gonna be my total, which is why the 1,000 goes here and the X goes here. Now, if you set up a different proportion, that is fine. But how do we solve these? We multiply these two and we divide by this. So you're gonna open up Desmos and you're gonna do 100 times 1,000 divided by 400 equals. Let me open up my Desmos. One hundred times one thousand divided by four hundred equals two fifty. So two fifty goes on this line right here, and that's what I would enter. So if you don't know where any of the numbers go, what any of the steps are, then you need to rewind to the exact spot that I have just explained through. All right, question number two. Michael needs to estimate how many students would join soccer at school. He needs to create a random um, sample of students, so how should Michael collect his sample? Select two that apply. 
Well, if I select every 15th person that comes out of school at dismissal, you know what? Some of them are going to be boys. Some of them are going to be girls. Some of them are going to be seventh graders. Some of them are going to be eighth graders. Some of them are going to be black. Some of them are going to be white. Some of them are going to be mixed. Some of them are going to be Latino. Some of them are going to be tall. Some of them are going to be short. Some of them are going to be fat. Some of them are going to be skinny. This is going to be a very good random sample. That's a good choice. Now, I'm going to ask all students who stay after for sports teams. Uh, well, you know, that's going to be athletes already, and athletes are probably going to be more interested in a soccer club, so that's not going to give you a good variety of opinions. 30 students in his second period math class. Again, that's not going to give you a good enough variety of opinions. The first 40 people that come into the cafeteria. Again, that's not a good enough variation, enough variety. Two people from every college pep class, that is going to give you some good variations. That'll give you enough opinions, enough ideas. That's a good choice. I want you to now use that same idea and read through to determine on your own the next question. If you need to pause the video, pause the video. Okay, slide this down. Okay, let's look at the next questions. Determine whether each statement is true based on the box plots. Select true or false for each statement. So as a reminder, this is the lowest point. So if I go straight down, the lowest point for store A is going to be 25. The lowest point for store B is going to be like 42. The middles are right here. This is the median for each. It's the line inside of the box. And when it says variability, the variability is the spread, how far apart the ends are. Okay, so it says the median for store A is 10 wristbands less than store B. Well, the median for store A is, it looks like 42. The median for store B looks like 52. So is the median for store A 10 less than store B? Yes, it is. That is true. The smallest num number sold by store A was about 17 less than the smallest number sold by store B. So I need to do 42 minus 25. So I'm going to go to my Desmos and I'm going to do 42 minus 25. Oh, I've got to clear. 42 minus 25. And that is 17. Oops, wrong one. So is that a true or false statement? That is true. Store has a greater spread in sales than store B. Well, spread is how far apart they are. That is also true. So for each one of these, a reminder, variability means spread. So how far apart are they? From the tallest to the smallest, from the biggest, from end to end. Uh, remember, the lowest is the last point. You're going to read it from down, and the median is the line inside the box. You go ahead, hit pause now on the video, and try this next question on your own. Go ahead and hit pause now. Okay, so Miss Wood has a box of markers, 15 orange, 10 green, and 25 red. What is the likelihood of randomly selecting each marker from the box? The first thing I want you to do is put that the total is equal to something. Well, we're going to add these together. So 15 plus 10 is 25, plus 25 is 50. So the total is equal to 50. And how did I get that? I added each of these numbers together. Now, 
I need to figure out where my point for neither likely nor unlikely is. I have to figure out what is that halfway point because that is the halfway point. So I have to figure out what is my halfway point. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take our total and we're going to divide it by 2. So we're going to take 25 and divide it by 2. 20, or, sorry, we're going to take 50. I'm doing the math in my head. We are going to take 50 and divide it by 2. Now, 50 divided by 2 is equal to 25. So the point where it is neither likely or unlikely is 25. So if it's equal to 25, it goes in this column. Now, if it's less than 25, it is unlikely. And if it is more than 25, it is likely. So when I read each one, a red marker. A red marker is 25. Oh, well, it's exactly 25, so it is neither likely nor unlikely. A green marker, it's 10. Well, 10 is less than 25, so it is unlikely. And 15 orange, that's less than 25. That means it is unlikely. So again, you're going to add them all up to figure out what your total is. You're going to divide your total in half to figure out where your 50% mark is, where your halfway point is. That's your point where it's neither likely nor unlikely. Anything below that is unlikely. Anything above that number is likely. Go ahead and pause this so that you can attempt the question with Miss Anderson about Miss Anderson. I'm going to go ahead and erase some of them because it has kind of squanched a couple of my answer choices down. So just kind of go ahead and pause. Ignore that I'm messing with life. Hopefully it changes things. Okay. There we go. You can go ahead and do that question for Miss Anderson. All right. Next question. The five, first five quiz grades for a third period class were. So the first five people to answer scored a 19, a 17, a 16, a 17, and an 18. Now, the next person to take the quiz scored a 9. What is that going to do to each of these? Okay, so 9. Is that an outlier? Yes, it is. So it is going to absolutely have an effect on the mean. In fact, it's going to pull the mean towards it. It's going to pull the mean. Because this is low, it's going to pull the mean lower. Because it's low, it is going to pull the mean lower. So the mean is going to be decreased. Now the median. The median is like that concrete wall in the middle of the interstate. And you could run into it if you'd like to, but you know what? Frankly, that wall ain't moving. Now, yes, you could calculate it, but there is going to be, for the median, little to no change. Now, yes, you could put them in order again and find it, but really, there's going to be little or no change. And the range, as long as it's outside of what you always have, is always, always, always going to increase. If it's inside of your other data points, it's going to be no change. Otherwise, your range will never decrease. You go ahead and do this question, turn your paper over, and do the question at the top on the next page by yourself. Okay, let's look at questions like this. Now, on the previous reviews and other points, it does not have the points given. I've decided because it was a little hard to find an image, I didn't want to confuse anyone, so I've given you the coordinates. But if we were doing this, the axis would have been right here, 
and then right here. I didn't want to confuse anyone. So I figured it just made more sense for me to explain how to do it and explain it here. So we've not included the um, axes and that's okay. But I have the points. So to do this, we're gonna do slip and slide. So step one for slip and slide is we stack them on top of each other. You don't change the order around, you just stack them on top. Step number two, you draw your slip and slide. Now, as a reminder, the, they stay on that side of the line. So your two comes down and it goes down the slide first, but it stays on that slot, side of the slide. Your three comes down and it stays on that slide. The negative one comes down and the negative four comes down. And the operation we do in the middle of each one of these is always subtraction. Now I want you to switch over to Desmos. Sorry, I should have closed those out earlier. We're gonna switch over to your Desmos. And again, the question is three minus two. So we're gonna clear all three minus two. It's going to be our one. So this is going to be equal to one. Don't mess with your life. Just put it in like it is. So we're having negative four minus a negative one. Negative four minus a negative one. Yes, and minus a negative becomes a big fat positive, but you know what? You get to use the calculator. It is negative three. And then I want you to double check that you've put in a negative one third. Now, if you needed to, let's see if that needs to be reduced. So again, we go to our um, Desmos calculator. I'm gonna hit the AB button. I'm gonna do one, I'm gonna slide it down. That's my negative three. I'm gonna hit my fraction button. Oh wait, look, it is negative one third. If it needed to be reduced, it would go ahead and do it for you. So please use the Desmos calculator appropriately. Now you go ahead and do this question on your own. If you don't know how to do it, pause, rewind the video, and follow the steps. Okay, moving on. To determine if they're proportional, there's two things that are true. Number one, it goes to the origin zero, zero. So I see the point zero, zero, I see the point zero, zero, I see the point zero, two. That means automatically this table cannot go through the origin. Now this one, I don't see the origin, but it could still be proportional because there's not either a zero for the X or a zero for the Y. So to do the rest of them, we are always going to do the Y divided by X. So I'm gonna do two divided by one, and that's two. I'm gonna do four divided by two. And yes, you have to do each one of them. Oh, it's also two. So Miss Wood, it's gonna be that one. No, you've got to try all of them. Now we have to do nine divided by three. Oh, that one's three. So, y divided by x for this is two, y divided by x is this is two, and y divided by x for this is three. So because there's one number different, that's not proportional. Six divided by four is 1.5. Eight divided by six, is 1.6 repeating. Already I can tell that's not gonna be it. Four divided by one is four. Eight divided by two is four. 12 divided by three is four. But this is not going through the origin, so it is not proportional. So you're saying, oh, Miss Wood, it's gotta be the last one. Well. Let's double check it to make sure. 
So we're going to do 5 divided by 2. Two point five. Um, ten divided by four. Two point five. Twelve point five divided by five. Two point five. And twenty five divided by ten. So we can tell very quickly that all of them are 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 